this Astor Pictionary math problem, we are going to look at a white dwarf mass and size. We're given in part A a white dwarf mass of one solar mass. And in part B, we're given a white dwarf initial mass of one solar mass and a final mass of two solar masses. We want to find in part A the approximate radius of the white dwarf and in B the final size of the white dwarf. We're given this relationship for our equation where the radius of the white dwarf is approximately equal to 1 divided by the mass of the white dwarf to the 1 -third power. So in part A, we have, we want to solve for the radius of the white dwarf where we're given this approximate equation relationship. So it's approximately equal 1 divided by, and the mass of the white dwarf we're given in part 1 is 1, and it's to the 1 -third power. So the radius of the white dwarf is equal to 1 divided by 1 to the 1 -third power, which is 1, and that result of 1 divided by 1 is just 1. So the radius of the white dwarf is approximately equal to 1, and the units are going to be Earth radii. So we put 1 R and then a small e for Earth. And that is our approximate answer. Now the real answer is 0 0.9 times the radius of the Earth. So it's slightly smaller than what we calculate, but it gives you a general idea of the size of the white dwarf. So a solar mass white dwarf is about the size of Earth. And in part B, we want to find the final size of the white dwarf given an initial mass of one solar mass and a final mass of two solar masses. So in this particular case in part B, it looks like the white dwarf is in a binary and it's accreting mass off of its companion. So it accretes enough mass so the final mass ends up being two solar masses. So how can we use this equation to find the final mass? Well, let's do a ratio. So we have to find the radius of the white dwarf initially and we want to compare that to the radius of the white dwarf finally. So we're just going to ratio the same equation, but we're going to take a look at initial and final values. So we're going to put an equal sign here, and then we have 1 over mass of the white dwarf. Now this mass of the white dwarf has to go with the initial case, and it's going to be the 1 -third power. Remember, it's radius of the white dwarf 1 over white, mass of the white dwarf. So this radius of the white dwarf initial is 1 over mass of the white dwarf initial. And then the final case, the radius of the white dwarf is 1 over the mass of the white dwarf. So now we have an equation where we have the radius of the white dwarf initial divided by the radius of the white dwarf final is equal to mass of the white dwarf final to the 1 -third power divided by mass of the initial white dwarf to the 1 -third power. Well, we already know that. We're given that the final white dwarf mass is two solar masses, and we're given the initial white dwarf mass is one solar mass, and the whole quantity is to the one-third power. So we have this relationship where we need to have two to the one-third power. So we have to go find a calculator. So on Google, I look up the word calculator and find one, and now I want to type in type in 2 x to the y parentheses 1 divided by 3 close parentheses equals and I get a value of about 1.26. So let's take a look at our values. We got a 2 which is approximately equal to 2.0 and 1 which is 1.0 so we have to look for two digits. So our 59 is greater than 50 so 2 goes up to 3 and our value is 1.3. So now our final white dwarf radius compared to our initial white dwarf radius is going to be 1 over 1 third. Let's see how we get that. So we have the radius of the white dwarf initially. Let's just carry it down. 
divided by the radius of the white dwarf finally is going to be 1.3. So now we want to solve the inverse of it. We want to solve for the final size of the white dwarf. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the radius of the white dwarf. Finally, and that will eliminate on the left hand side of the equation this radius of the white dwarf finally. We want to also divide by both sides of the equation by 1.3 so we can isolate on the right hand side of the equation radius of the white dwarf finally. So let's eliminate like letters and numbers. 1.3 decreases with or eliminates 1.3 and you have radius of the white dwarf final on the left hand side erasing with by the, or eliminating the radius of the white dwarf final on the left hand side. So you are left with radius of the white dwarf final on the right hand side and that's going to be equal to 1 divided by 1.3 radius of the white dwarf initial. So you can see that the final white dwarf is going to be smaller than the initial white dwarf. So our radius of the white dwarf final, I'll just transfer it to the left hand side of the equation, that's going to be equal to 1 divided by 1.3. Let's go back to our calculator, 1 divided by 1.3, and we get a value of 0.77. 0 0.77 of the rate of the radius of the white dwarf initial. Now we know the initial white dwarf is one solar mass. And from the same equation, we know that approximately the radius of the white dwarf initially is one solar radius from part A. So we can find a final value for the radius of the white dwarf, and I'm going to put an approximation symbol here, since where it's going to be approximate, and it's going to be around 0 0.77, and remember the radius that we substitute in is the radius of the Earth. This is slightly an overestimate of the size, but you get a general idea of the radius of finally is going to be smaller than the radius initially. The radius initially was around 1 and finally it's 0.77. The more massive the white dwarf, the smaller the white dwarf. 